Well, this late still supplies a small hydroelectric power plant. Oh, they found a good one then, did they? A good water supply. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's well worth a visit down there. So here we are. Good nose for a more tranquil setting, I have to say. Just to give you an idea, Padstow, Newquay, St Austell, Bobmin, Luke Gillian, just to there. We're just southeast of Luxulian and we're going to walk along this pathway in the valley three and a third miles, apparently. Let's see what we can find. Turn right to the bridge. Uh, and on up there. Already there through the trees you can see the central feature, the star of the show, to the viaduct. The art of the mason. Isn't that beautiful? And with the spring shadows, you can now make out the bridge. in 1839 to 1842 and strangely although we're on top of a hill here on top of the valley uh, there's a sluice first stone viaduct ever built in Cornwall my gosh they use some massive slabs of stone you can actually see the sets here for the rail. It's a tramway. 200 metres long and 27 metres high. So that if we pop over here, something of a stunning view. East and west. It still has a use today, as you can tell from the rail down there. Stream tumbling away down there. See the gorse is having a go at it. And now this side of the bridge, we find another leet. And the reason is that the bridge was actually used as an aqueduct as well as a viaduct for trams. It was actually used to transport water. Amazing piece of engineering. And looking very carefully at the granite sets, look here you can see where a rail chair sat. In there. These things are positioned every uh, couple of yards on either side. Lamppost, do you think? Or drains to get any surface water down into the leet? We now head off in this direction, looking for more finds. Before we head off in that direction, if we turn to the left here over the top of the first sluice, there's another tramway heads off over there. Stone set still in place. Whilst in that direction, which lines up with the bridge, you can actually see the water channel for the aqueduct, which explains the sluice. You can see that the channel has been uh, cleared out, so you get an idea of the alignment. The idea of the sluice then would have been to allow the water to run off if they had an excess, I imagine. If we head this direction. See what delights we find next. There's this for a start. 
which unbelievably is part of the old tramway tram rails. A junction or a splitting of paths. Evidence along the way. A large T on the opposite side, which looks something which looks like a K. Is this somebody's boundary marker? Delightful place to walk. Clinging on to the side of a valley here. You can see where they had to chisel this out of. Uh, rock. That was to make their aqueduct. It's just of here. Crosses through to the opposite side. And it's still got water in it. By the way, the bird song, nothing to do with me. I suspect they got fed up of chiseling it out of rock and so put it on the other side of the tramway. Easier going. You can very clearly make out the tramway here, look. Sunken between banks and with the set still in place. Because it's an early tramway, it would have been horse drawn. And there is something I have never ever seen before. It's an original rail chair. If I put my hand in it, you can see it's very narrow, so that would have been a tram rail, not a railway rail, see what I mean? Unbelievable. A little bit farther along, and just to show off, there's a whole line of them. I didn't think it would get any better, but here look, the original rail. How amazing is that? Obviously the scrap merchants around here aren't very keen, or spoilt for choice. I hope this comes out as pretty on the film as it is actually being here. I can't believe why this place isn't better known. You can see just, just how it was laid. I thought it was a prop to start with, but that's not a prop, it's real. I didn't notice where this happened, but the lead has changed sides again. Obviously the other side was just as difficult then. Still carrying water to this day. 1840 that was built. This time we can actually see where the leak changes sides across there, look. Another convergent, divergent crossing here, look. And looking very closely, you can see where trucks sometimes want to go the other way and we're wearing into the rail. As so we're now heading off along here. Here's the leak coming along from the way we've just come from and here you can see one of the purposes for it. As it turns and goes under the bridge and then shoots out over there over what would have been an overshot water wheel. Unbelievably, 
the main part of it is still here. 1842 the mill was constructed. I don't know whether that was the original construction or not. Huge granite sets to build that out of. I've truly never seen anything like it. Huge mill, basically in the middle of nowhere. Pitch for the millstone right alongside, complete with all the gear. Same on the opposite side, so that had a lot of power because it's driving four grindstones basically, millstones. And you can tell by the size of the bolts everywhere that there used to be some huge timbers here at one time, supporting the rest of the mill I guess. The wheel was used to actually hold um, trams up and down the incline and then later for grinding rock. So why it's got two what looks like millstone or four millstone pits, I don't know. A ruined building associated with the water wheel. And another one, what is above the incline, so it might have been a signalling station. A huge chimney in it, must have been a cold place to work. The telltale for me is this little window which looks down the slope, down the incline where the trams would have come trundling up and where we go trundling down. Bye bye tramway. I'm not sure I'd feel happy waiting at the bottom of the incline for these things to arrive, just in case. They weren't about to waste the water because they contained it in a litre again and brought it along here. Took the opportunity to top it up and cross the litre again here. And then head uphill. It's a bit unkind. The water course is forked here. We've got the minor of the two, judging by the sound. And having sailed down the incline, we're now flogging our way up here. And aside the track here, there's evidence of uh, minor scale mineral extraction. near enough, alongside a forest giant, size of that thing. Do an alpine section here, here, and on down there. Across the Leet, which is uh, about the tenth mile of this three mile walk I think, and continue downhill. All downhill has to be paid for. To here. Big bearing there for a wheel, you would think. Has to drag the trucks up out of the mine. It's the Pretty Wood Mine. It stretched right across to the other side of the valley. Started in 1813, opened in 1813. The other side of the valley, for reference, is um, over there somewhere. Some ancient bit of metalwork tucked away here. Bit of mining history. Right, we've done all that bit, up there, down there, we're about there now. 
we now continue on down. There. I don't like all this downhill, it's going to be paid for somewhere. Mind you, I don't like the uphill either, so slightly difficult. To some wooden steps by a post. With them then. Down there, a glimpse through the trees every now and again, you get to see the rail line that we saw going under the viaduct at the start. Gives you some idea of where we are height-wise, about halfway. Huge great rocks here uh, above the path. Corn was built of, I guess, granite. Quite a bit of it on the path as well. Pick your way up and over, occasionally round. It sure is pretty. And this is kind of almost unbelievable. Here we are, middle of nowhere, and over here is a rail bridge. It actually crosses the incline that we were on earlier. That's a two mile incline apparently. It was actually constructed in 1840 by Nicholas Kendall as part of an eight mile carriage drive to Luxington Church. It took 20 years to complete the uh, eight miles and look at the train we've been on, I don't think that's uh, too bad at all to be honest. And there you see the incline stretching way up into the distance. Right up there. Finished today, no cheese and pickle. Diet day. Orange. I'm not the only one that's been here having their lunch by the look of it. That's your lot. Now we head down the incline. Imagine trams rattling up and down here all day. Never far from Elite on this walk. Still heading down. Granite sets for company. The consequence is, of course, if you can see it, that is, that the railway is now up there. Uh, that's a bit late now. The incline ends just of here. That's it clawing its way up the valley. We now head this way. We really dropped some distance on that uh, incline on the last little bit. And normally I'd complain about those vans being there, but they do give you a sense of scale, don't they? That's quite enormous. large-scale engineering, isn't it? Do the decorative bit on it.
We've now got a flog back up here again. Our leech now become a river. and all that under the railway. Over the river once again. So we're quite a narrow channel. Some more industrial archaeology besides the path. And this is a clay drying works for drying and processing China clay. Nice ornate base on the chimney, stretching ever skyward. No doubt this is what that lower floor looked like before they had a clear out. And if we then wander along a little bit and peer through the gate, what you see there is the first part of the China clay process. It's a settling pit. It'll be pumped there as a slurry allowed to settle. Now a little farther along, again looking out of the back as it were, we have that. Well, I guess they uh, managed to get different grades. Sharp bend in the tramway. It's a huge piece of uh, leftover bit from a machine. Probably a press, too big to move. And peering into here, some more parts of the process. Got out of that well. Useful. Big steel beams up there would probably have taken some sort of hoist or lift. It's like it on both sides. I guess when they finished what they were doing they would have wheeled it out on a trolley and maybe put it into there for the next part of the process. Here we can actually get access to settling pit and it is absolutely enormous. You'd get a fair bit of china clay in there I imagine. Here's a photograph of a china clay settling pit taken many 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 moons ago with a grumpy looking child in the foreground and on the very end of the whole structure Probably the gift shop, isn't it? 1840s? Maybe not. Well, having said that, they do have kilns here. Or ovens. Long defunct hinges. And the stoke hole down there. Absolutely fascinating. Right. Uh, onward, I think. Up there. Unbelievably beautiful walk. And the temperature now, just beautiful. 
washing the river for the last time. It's very difficult to give up and stop filming this thing. That's it, no more. Temperature now is about body temperature, I would think. Just feels just right. Just gone half two. Striding home. Carelessly scattered at the side of the path. Old tramway rail. Should be the museum. Very bolted to the chair, I would think. It's had ties in it. Having dealt with the river, we now have to cross the railway. Up there then. That embankment is uh, built to last. Correct. Swapping sides again. Just one more. Ooh. Man, oh man. A granite clapper bridge. Middle of nowhere. Gaining some height at last. Finally, hoving into view. Now that is what you call a viaduct and an aqueduct, don't forget. Eighteen forty engineering. You just can't get used to the scale of the thing. And I'll have to keep doing this, but I don't know what else to do. Well done, David. Brilliant walk. Thank you very much. See you on the ferry.